back to the program. We're going to have some fun now because it's time for the final part in our series on sleep. This is a very serious subject, but there will be a funny side of it as well because today's subject is a very common problem with five million people at it each and every night, snoring, I mean. Now, the causes are widespread, ranging from overeating and drinking to hay fever, and the list of suggested cures is equally varied. Nasal sprays, laser surgery, even old, you know, those old housewives' tales like sewing a tennis ball into your pajamas and all that sort of thing. Well, before you reach for the needle and thread, it's time for some expert advice. And joining us now is the co-founder of the British Snoring Association, that's Marianne Davy. Then from Frimley Park Hospital in Surrey, ear, nose and throat specialist, Andrew McComb. And a couple who have tried everything to stop snoring, short of divorcing, Jim and Joan Fife from Glasgow. So welcome to all of you. Now, Jim and Joan, I really want to go to this partnership first because, well, actually, why don't you just start it off and tell me how much he snores? Well, every night, so much that you have to sort of give him a knock on the, the side. And, In the ribs. Uh -huh, and, um, he's probably got the bruises to prove that. You know? <laughs> um, get up and go into another room or put him out to the balcony on holiday. You didn't? Yeah. <laughs> well, literally, it was so bad that you put him out to sleep on the balcony. Yeah. So how it did was, you take to that then? It was then? hot anyway. Yeah, I was, I was warm anyway, so <laughs> I thought it was quite a good idea. So I get quite a good sleep anyway, so... So you slept yeah. well out on the balcony? Yeah, yeah. Oh, fine, and then all of you got on very well inside. Yeah. You and your yeah. sons. Now, you claim also that Joan snores, don't you? Yeah, she does, yeah. Yeah, quite a bit. But you don't think so? No. <laughs> So what I've never heard myself. Sorry? <laughs> I've never heard myself. <laughs> <laughs> but you've heard Jim lots of times. <laughs> so what have you tried, Jim, to stop you snoring? Well, I, I've had an operation on my nose, um, the septum in my, in my nose, um, which helped, helped a bit, I'm told. Uh, but uh, it's not completely cured it. So what did they actually do to, um, to your nose? The septum, uh, I think, is, is split. It's like a, a cartilage just uh, in your nose, uh, and they split that and open it to, to open up the... The, the air passages mm. in your nose. That's a matter of fact, does he get annoyed when you tell him that he snores and you say, does he sort of get a bit tetchy yes. about it? Yes, um, he doesn't actually believe me when I tell him. So I've taped him a couple of times. Oh, have you? And he still doesn't believe me. <laughs> well, you thought it was somebody else, uh -huh. didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> I know any time I mention my husband, he just goes, well, look, short of cutting my head off, I don't know what else to do, uh -huh. really. <laughs> so, Marianne, obviously you were driven to set up the association by your own husband, so how badly did he snore at the time? He snored very badly. It was all night, every night. And the difficult thing was, he was very young when he started snoring. So we were really thinking we're going to be faced with this for the rest of our lives. So we set about trying to find a cure for him. Because actually for some people, it can just drive you absolutely mad, can't it? Oh, the yes. Partner. Yes, it did. It, it, um, it's really very bad for your health to be kept awake all night, every night, and that in itself causes problems in the relationship because you're tired. And um, I think the difficult thing is the snorer doesn't always realise that they're causing the snoring <laughs> Or noise. believe you when you tell them. That's right. So, so did you used to go to another bed? Um, no, unfortunately I couldn't. We had three children <laughs> at the time. Um, some people are lucky enough to be able to move into another bed, but for the majority of people that's not the case. So really it's important to find out what's causing it and then we can treat it. Which brings us to Andrew, to our doctor today, because Andrew, I gather that there are many different causes really. So let's look, keeping it simple, but let's look at it from a medical point of view what the process of snoring actually is. The, the fundamental problem is that when we fall asleep at night, everything relaxes. Um, and the soft part, if we look at this cross section, the soft part, the palate and the back of the tongue, collapse and the airway becomes smaller. Mm -hmm. we still Maybe just point it out just um, this is which the, part? the palate here. Yes. And we'll all recognize that as, as the uvula, the dangly bit that hangs sure. down here. And the tonsils are here, and this is the back of the tongue here, and the back wall of the, the pharynx, the throat. Because the airway is narrower, and we still need the same amount of air, the airflow's got to be faster, and so that creates turbulence. And a bit like a loose sail in the breeze or a flag, you get flutter of these tissues here, and the snoring sound that uh, is obviously mm. such a problem. If you've got upstream obstruction in the nose, that just makes the whole thing worse. So when it comes to operation, which we hear a lot about these days, I mean, I gather it is really painful. Is that true? Most of the surgery on the palate can be quite painful. There are some newer techniques that are less painful. Um, 
but they're, they're done in a different way and perhaps do less tissue damage. The pain is a reflection of the amount of tissue that, that, that's operated upon or damaged. So what are the surgery. options then when it comes to operations? Most of us will start with surgery on the nose to try and improve the nasal airway and uh, one can try some of uh, the simple remedies that Marianne will show us. Is but that what Jim had actually on, on the nose area? And, and what, then what he had was a septoplasty to straighten mm -hmm. up the partition and try and improve the, the nasal airflow. If that doesn't work, then one really needs to look at surgery on the palate here, the, the, the uvula, the dangly bit, or the tonsils. And that often means removing them and trimming away some of that floppy tissue to try and stiffen it up. That's quite a lot of surgery, isn't it? Yes, it is. And, and it's not something to be taken lightly, but clearly if it's causing enough problems, then it's, it's something that you've got to think about. How, how do you feel actually when people come along to you looking for surgery for snoring? Well, I, we, we try and always do this on an individual basis, and it depends how much trouble people are having. Um, many people have tried very hard losing weight, cutting down on alcohol and cigarettes, and are still having a big problem, and it's causing couples to move into separate rooms. And I think if there's enough problem, it's, it's worth doing. I mean, we certainly have the techniques available to us. So, so Joan, uh, I mean, did you try, did you buy all these devices and things that we're going to look at with Marianne? Did you try everything? We've tried, I uh, have, we've tried the strips um, and the operation the and the, the spray, a Baconies mm -hmm. spray. Um, well, Marianne, you've got a, a weird and wonderful selection. Let's look at them and maybe our doctor would say as we go along whether he likes or dislikes them. Now, what is this sort of mouth guard thing which looks hideous this to me? This one here. This one. Yes, well, this is really designed for people who are termed a tongue-based snorer. Now, let's just see that. Just show can it to the camera. you see that there? And if you can see, the lower portion of it sits forward of the top part. Open it up there, sir. But that, to me, looks so ugly, and I would have thought uncomfortable to wear at night. Well, of course, if you put it in on the first night, then it is going to be uncomfortable because you're not used to having things in your mouth. But actually, it's a very, very good device for those people who've got what is termed a tongue-based problem, and their tongue actually blocks the throat and the air can't get down. So by using this little device, it can bring the tongue forward. It's a passion killer, that down. one, isn't it? It is. And of course, once it's in, once it's in, you really can't speak. But oh, I think dear. that's a small <laughs> price to pay. For oh, being I able just to can't. Sleep I can't see that one. Is that what your husband wears? It is. Yes. Gosh. And he's been using that now for about uh, 10 to 15 years, and it's still very, very. That's what did you make? <laughs> <laughs> do you turn the light out before he actually puts yes. that in? Yes, yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> I do think that looks awful. I'm sure it does a trick, but it I mean, does. It's all. Yes. Now, what do you think of that, Andrew? That, that's particularly good for, for as Marianne says, tongue-based snorers. And those are people you can often spot because they've got that rather receding jawline, and, and it helps to pull the jaw and therefore. So the, the tongue actually is dropping back in the throat. Is that the idea? Yes. Well, if we look at our our diagram mm. again, the tongue is very much attached to the jawbone, mm -hmm. and. If you can pull that forward, you can pull the tongue forward, and the back bit of the tongue here gets lifted forward, and would that you, can make quite a big difference. Would you wear that, Jim? No, certainly not. No, I don't what? think so. No. Not too much of a passion killer. No, for me. I, I couldn't sleep. I don't think about that. No, I would. I must. I would find that odd. Hate that. I think it's going to play rugby. I mean, that's like a gum shield, isn't it? You put in for rugby. And what are, I also like. I mean, what's that other one? Is that a similar? It's a very one? similar device. You don't actually it? go to bed with this in. This is just to hold it so that you can mold it. The good thing about all of these hold, hold devices, so that you, can you, mold it. you mold it to your own jaw shape. So what you do with it, you drop it into hot water oh, and I then see. you mold it. So you do. But cut a similar that. thing. It's a very similar. I notice thing. you've got lots and lots of earplugs. So I mean, do people honestly buy earplugs too? Yes, they help do. Them deal yes, with it? yes, because. Of course, um, it's not only the snorer, it's also the partner of the snorer that's affected. So they really do like to have something. So we do a range of earplugs, and it's very useful for holidays, of course. Do you want to demonstrate these strips for me as well? I can show you the strips. Now, the strips here are very useful for those people who have small or collapsing nostrils. And what happens when they breathe in, their nostrils actually collapse, and of course, the air can't get through. But something like this that goes across the top of the nose, it actually pulls the nostrils out a little bit, and it allows that on again till I see how it, it actually that sticks is. on sticks and it on goes like so. on like that. So you that. just put on one of those every night? Every night, yes. And they have proven to be very, very useful. Andrew, do people wear those? Yes. Well, of course, Robbie Fowler is the great example in, on yes. the sports pitch. <laughs> They've got a little plastic uh, splint in them, so they actually hold the nasal passages open, and, and it increases the cross-sectional area by about 30%. And just a final word, really. I know there's, there's a lot to choose from in terms of nasal sprays and all that sort of thing. Medically, are you worried about those, the constant use of those every night on your throat or your nose? 
some of the, the nasal sprays, the hay fever ones, aren't particularly harmful. Um, things like uh, Beconase, something with a steroid base. But the decongestants, things, uh, they can be particularly dangerous if used long term. A few days, not a problem, but long term can cause quite well, serious problems. we're going to get a few calls. We're going to try and take a few representative calls from the hundreds of people ringing in about snoring. But for the moment, thank you very much indeed for coming to see us on the house. Thank you. <laughs> As I mentioned, snoring is a subject.